Right now we have a first time DEF CON speaker, Franz Payer. He's going to speak to you about exploiting music streaming with JavaScript. Uh, it's his first time at DEF CON. Please give him a big round of applause. He's 18. <laughs> <laughs> I did the same thing. I went, oh, we're going to give you shots. He's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I hope you guys are all awake. So uh, I'm Franz Pair, a uh, programmer at Tactical Network Solutions, and I'm going to go over exploiting music streaming with JavaScript. So a couple of acknowledgments before I start. I'd like to thank Zachary Cutlip and Craig Hefner for all the help and support. Um, and my employer, Tactical Network Solutions, for letting me learn about security without going to jail, which is great. Uh, special thanks to Ronald Jenkins, who is an independent artist who has given me permission to use his music in his presentation so I don't get sued by the RIAA. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I'd like to thank the EFF for helping me address issues with the DMCA and the CFAA. Um, however, the decision was made to not release the original tool which I had planned to. Uh, and that was a Google Chrome extension which would showcase all the different exploits and vulnerabilities which I'm going to cover today. Uh, but I will be releasing an alternative tool which I'll get into more detail later. I also want to state that the opinions and views expressed here are mine and not my employers. So. so what am I going to be talking about? Well I'm going to give you some background information of what my project is and what I've done so you can have a context of like my approach and how I, how I did it. Uh, then I'll go over the music streaming basics so you guys have an understanding of how it works and the implementations today and what you're going to be seeing. And then I'm going to go over my security investigation process, so kind of taking you from the beginning to the end of research to exploitation. And hopefully by the end of this you'll have a pretty good grasp on how you can do this by yourself. And then I'll go over exploit demo assuming everything works out all right. And if I have any time afterwards I'll talk about my new uh, alternative extension which I'm going to be releasing. And I'll take questions at the end if we have any time. So the end goal. Well, originally I had planned to release a Google Chrome extension which would have all the different exploits which I'm going to show you. Uh, and the way this would work is that it would mimic the music player whenever possible. So whenever I was smart enough to figure out how to reverse engineer the code and, uh, and generate the requests the way they did. Otherwise, I would just log whenever I saw some MP3 flying by and I look at the syntax and I match, you know, that syntax and every time something that matches that syntax flies by, I can go get with that song. And so the end result is that you have something that sits in the background and every time you listen to a song, you can download it. Um, but I'm not going to be releasing that. So what am I going to be releasing? Well, it's an alternative which is, uh, it's not exactly the same. It's a forensics tool, not an exploitation tool. And what it does is it duplicates requests that it sees flying by and it caches it in your RAM. And this is helpful for like a hex dump analysis afterwards. So if you are like into doing like malware analysis without wanting to put it on your hard drive, uh, you can do it entirely from your browser now. Um, and this is also helpful if you want to see exactly what's being loaded into your browser. So here's the wall of shame, a bunch of different services which I found vulnerabilities in. Um, some of these have made fixes, some of them haven't, most of them haven't. So we have Pandora, Amini, SoundCloud, GrooveShark, Django, playlist.com, and 8 tracks. So quite a big list. Um, all right, so what is streaming? Well, Wikipedia defines it as a way to constantly receive and present data while it's being uh, delivered by a provider. So from a developer's point of view, this means that you're going to be receiving data in a really long stream and, uh, and as soon as you get the first piece, you can start processing it and displaying it to the viewer. From a attacker's point of view, this means that you're going to constantly be using the data and at the very end you'll have everything you need to reconstruct the file, whether it's a song or whatever. Uh, and it's only a matter of capturing the data pieces. And once you do that, there are two technical major, ro uh, two major roadblocks that prevent you from playing it back. You have reassembly of the, pi uh, of the pieces. Typically if you, in, in like the way the internet works is when you send data, it's not always received in the same order in which it was sent. And so this could be more difficult depending on what type of protocol they use. Uh, and if you see any encryption, that's probably going to be stopping you because usually if you want to break encryption, it's not to get music, it's to get someone's password. So this is, that's going to be your major roadblock. So the protocols which I've seen, uh, typically when you have some sort of desktop application like Spotify or Pandora 1, they will use a custom TCP protocol. 
And this makes it incredibly difficult to reassemble because A, it's either not documented or B, it's proprietary and you don't know how it works. So this is probably going to stop you dead in your tracks. Um, however, I've noticed that some services like Last.fm use HTTP or HTTPS because they don't want to write their own custom protocol. Um, and but this is typically what you see uh, in some browser based applications. So uh, the regular Pandora app, SoundCloud, uh, these guys are going to be using HTTP and HTTPS. And this is because they don't want to do extra coding. The browser does it all for you, why would you want to do it yourself? And if you're an attacker or a hacker or whatever, this means that you can use the browser too. Now you don't have to wor worry about reassembly and de encryption. So this is why I targeted these because they're extremely easy to go after. And there are two different types of streaming which I kind of named myself. There is static streaming where you will have one URL per song. So you'll have to usually reference it by a file name and you have to know the directory and everything. And this is different from a dynamic one where you have one page and depending on what parameters you send it you get back a different file. So if you can see here we have a stream.php uh, page and depending on what key you send it you get back a different file. So it's one to one versus one to many. And this is important to keep track of when you're doing analysis. So there are two major types of music players. Uh, the most common one is Flash. This is a majority of the web pl uh, players you'll see. However, they may still use JavaScript. I've seen a lot of people be really lazy and they will uh, actually use JavaScript to pull back the data and then just pass it on to the Flash. So all the Flash does is play it back. And this is typically because you have Flash libraries that are made to play back music but not necessarily customized to work with your interface. So this is how they get around it. Um, however, some, some services you're going to have to decompile them. And I don't know any Flash myself so I skipped anything that did this. Um, but it's important to know that if, if you are successful at decompiling the Flash and you want to exploit it using your Chrome extension with JavaScript, it runs in a separate environment due to security issues. So if there's some kind of secret key baked into the Flash, you're not going to, you're not going to get it from JavaScript. Um, and then the other one you'll see is HTML5 which is kind of experimental right now because not all the browsers have full support for it yet. Uh, and you typically see this in mobile based applications because Flash is losing support there. And this is entirely in JavaScript so no, 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 no decompiling or anything but it's minified most of the time which means that it's obfuscated and it's really hard to read. So where's the vulnerability? Well I already went over how the browser does all like the major work for you. So what do you have to do? Well, there are two ways of going about this. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, you can copy the requests by kind of just telling based on the syntax of the URL. Uh, and this is typically pretty easy. You know, you look at one URL and you're like, all right, there's a file name there and this is the structure and you know, you can easily write a regular expression to do this. Um, however, this can be suspicious if they're doing some kind of server side logging and they see two identical requests coming in within milliseconds of each other. They're probably like, huh, why, why, this isn't normal activity, why is this happening? Um, but I haven't really seen this being an issue in terms of any red flags being uh, thrown up. But this can be limiting. I found services where they have one time use tokens. So you use a token to stream your music and after it's been used, it's no longer valid. So by the time your second request gets there, it's not valid and you don't get anything back. Um, and the way you get around this is through generating the requests yourself. So this is going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, sometimes you can tell based on the syntax of the URL what variables are needed and how you get them. Other times you have to reverse engineer the code and figure out what they're doing. Uh, but if you are successful, you get past the, the limitation there and it's undetectable without se uh, when there's sessions. So if, uh, if they have sessions then it looks from the server side that two, two requests are coming in from two, two different people in the same IP address and they just happen to be listening to the same song. All right. So, how do you go about doing this? Well, the it's important to to keep in mind that it's you got to do breadth before depth. You don't want to have to you don't want to like dig yourself in the first thing you see and waste two hours and figure out that's the wrong thing. You want to take you know, like keep track of all your possible options and then um, take that take the path of least resistance. And uh, you want to remember breadth before depth. Oh, okay, yeah, I did that. Okay. <laughs> Um, once you, once you keep that in mind, you want to locate the music file in the network traffic. So you can do this in Chrome by opening up the developer console 
and then going to the network tab and you can see all the traffic flying by. Um, and there's going to be a lot of traffic so you want to filter based on XHR traffic and possibly sorting by type. And the reason why, why you want to do this is because um, typically when music is loaded in a streaming service, especially uh, internet radio service, the music isn't loaded when the page is sent to you originally. Uh, like with Pandora, the songs are actually loaded after the page has been loaded. This is because they want to have time to look at your recommendations and figure out what song to give you next. Um, also, you, they don't know how many songs you're going to be listening to before you go away. So they have to load this after the fact. And this is done through Ajax which is going to be showing up as XHR traffic. And you can also sort by type like looking for audio files because that's probably what you're going to be uh, finding. Once you find the actual request, you want to inspect any parameters in that request. So headers, um, any, any kind of parameters that they send in the URL, stuff like that. Then you want to find out where those values come from. And there are many different locations where these values are going to come from. The first place, to, you, you want to do the easiest to the hardest. The first place that's easiest is the page URL. Sometimes the, the song ID is in the URL that you're on, of the page you're on and you could just use that to get the, to get the song. Uh, after that you might want to look at the page source, do control F, look for the name of the parameter, you might be able to find it. Then you might want to look at local storage, possibly cookies as well because I've seen uh, with services like GrooveShark, they will, if you have a playlist or something, they will send the whole thing to you at once so you don't have to keep making requests to find out what the next song is. And then at the very end you want to look at JavaScript because that's going to be hard to read and you're going to have to figure out what someone else's code is doing. And when you have everything, you can attempt to re replicate the request. So kind of based on the syntax of the request you've seen as your example, take the parameters you have and generate the same thing. So our first target is a mini. Uh, th this is a really great first target. They're, they, they're a flash based service but they use uh, JavaScript to load. And they have almost no security. I was able to exploit this guy, these guys without looking at any code. So this is the, the page with the network traffic. I've circled the, the, ne the network tab. And at the very bottom you can see that we have an audio slash mp3 file which is actually what we're looking for. So if you wanted to take, to take the easy way out, you could actually right click this and open it in a new tab and then download it that way. So this is, this is the cheap way out. Um, okay. However, I, I was trying to show you guys how to automate this with JavaScript. So we're going to do more inspection. So looking at the actual request, we see there's actually only one parameter and I didn't, I took out all the other headers because those are the standard headers that your browser sends. But we had this FID. And I'm going to go out on a hunch and say FID stands for file ID because they typically name things like this. Um, so now we look for the FID. So the first place to look is going to be in the URL. And sure enough, it's in the URL. Um, you're like, great, we have everything we needed. Now how do I, how do I duplicate what they did? So you go and look back at the original request and you can see that they actually have this weird subdomain thing going on. And I found out with uh, deduction that the first four characters of the FID are the first four characters of that subdomain in reverse order. So it wasn't very difficult to figure that one out. Um, and you can easily replicate this using JavaScript but I'm not allowed to show you guys any exploit code. So our next target is GrooveShark. And this is quite a step up. Um, I chose, I, I chose these guys because they have HTML5 and I was kind of wondering how that would play out in terms of difficulty. And they use several factors of authentication um, and the JavaScript is minified so it's hard to read which makes it really for the faint of heart. Uh, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. So you want to make sure that you keep track of what you're doing the whole time. Um, know what parameters you have, what you're looking for, what your next target is and every time you do something new, update your progress so you don't get lost because it can get confusing. So I went ahead and uh, I'm going to tell you guys that you're going to want to have a JavaScript beautifier because it makes the glob on the left look like the glob on the right. And uh, while you still have characters like underscore underscore p, at least you can have proper spacing and you can read functions. So that's great. Um, and here this is, uh, I skipped the network, tra the network analysis and this is the actual request itself. And I've highlighted that they have, that's the URL they have there and all they have is a stream key as what you send to them. So off the bat you think, hey, this is pretty easy. I need one parameter which is stream key. So that's what I'm going to look for. 
So you also, I looked at all the traffic to see what was coming and I found this more.php file and there is a get stream key from song IDEX method which takes several parameters but what this will do is return the stream key which, what we're, which is what we were looking for. Um, and so we need the session, the token, the UUID and uh, the song ID and the method I highlighted because that changes all the time but we know what it is because it says up there. So we only need four parameters. Um, I say only because it actually is easier than it seems. Uh, and while I was looking more at PHP, I found this get communication token method which uses a secret key and I like secrets so I'm going to keep this in mind. Uh, so what do we need? Well from the very beginning we know that as soon as we get the stream key we can get the song and we need, we know to get the stream key we need to call more.php with this get stream key from song idx method and we need to pass it these four parameters and more.php has a secret key so I'm interested. So I already looked through everything, it's time for the JavaScript. And this is what I get and in the very first line you see this window.gs.tpl and I'm guessing gs stands for Groove Shark. So I'm like cool they're storing stuff in, in the JavaScript environment, uh, let's see what they have. I find this window.gs.config which has the session ID. So we're like alright that's one down, what else is there? There's actually this window.gs.models.q.models which turns out to be the entire playlist which you have saved in memory and every single song in this playlist has an ID which is the song ID. So right off the bat we were able to find two of the parameters which we needed just by looking at the very first line of the JavaScript file. So not bad uh, but we still need the rest of the, the parameters. So I do so this is kind of keeping track of everything. We need the token of the UUID now. So I search for the UUID because it was easier and sure enough I find a uh, function that takes no parameters which is good news because now I don't have to find any more parameters. I can just copy this function and every time I need a new UUID I just call this function. So this is an easy copy and paste. Um, so now we're left with token and this is where it gets a little bit more challenging. So I do a control F for token and I find this f.header.token which turns out to be the token putty being put into the header of the request that we saw. So looking at it, it takes, there's a bunch of stuff that we need. Um, so going top down, like you should read code, there's this r.lastRandomizer which is equal to O and remember what I said about functions that take no parameters, we can just copy and paste them and sure enough that's the function right there. So that's taken care of. We need this r.rev token. So I do a control F for rev token. And I find rev token which is equal to n. n is equal to GUI flubber which is the secret key which they hope no one would find. <laughs> um, unfortunately they probably shouldn't have put it right on top of, okay. So <laughs> now we really need uh, the current token because if you recall method was just the method we were calling the URL with and we, we had that documented. So now we just need the current token. So I just searched for any instances of token because I couldn't find any instances of current token. Um, and yeah, this is where the secret key comes in. Because get communication token returns the token that we need for this request. And so now we're on a hunt for the secret key. Which control F shows that it is the hex MD5 of the session ID, which we found on the very first step. So we already have everything that we need. Um, and to just recap, we needed the stream key and we got that by finding these four variables which uh, were just in the JavaScript and the secret key was needed to get the token. So we have everything and you, with this information you can generate the request. But I can't show you an exploit code so we're just going to go straight to a demo. All right. So this is Django.com. Oh wait, I gotta switch. All right. So this is Django.com. They are a very small music streaming service, and it's like an internet radio station. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is open up the developer tools and go to the network tab. And you want to do this before you actually play the song because if you do it after you play the song, you're not going to see it in the network traffic because it's already been loaded. So it's important to keep that in mind. All right. 
So, so it plays, which is good. And I'm going to filter based on XHR traffic down here. And at the very bottom, we have this audio slash MPEG file, which turns out to be what we're looking for. So I'm going to click on it and look for anything that we might need. And it turns out that they, this is a statically assigned, uh, static streaming website. So we just need this file name. And it's important to keep in mind, um, here we have this weird directory thing going on, which is also the first six characters of the, f of the, the song ID. So if we need that, we have it right there. And because I, I, I don't really know where to look for this file ID because it doesn't have a, a specific parameter name in front of it, so I can't do a control F, uh, I'm just going to look at the other traffic that was, that we filter on because there's only four other requests, so it's not going to take us very long. And you can see here that this responds with a bunch of JavaScript files, uh, JavaScript, and it has a, like, it has a song ID here, but it doesn't actually correspond to the 08, 06 one that we have. So that's, that's a dead end right there. Um, but if we look here, this page actually returns the URL without the file name, just the whole URL. So this is our target. Um, and if you look at the headers, they take uh, quite a few parameters. So we have first time, which is equal to one. I'm um, guessing that means true. So that's going to be a binary flag. You can probably lie on that if you want to. Um, an SID, which I'm not really sure what it is. A version number, which is probably going to be the same every time. SUW, which I'm not sure what it is either. And CB, which I'm also not sure about. But at least now we know what names we're looking for. And at this point, um, I actually noticed that I'm glad that Chrome has this, but they have this initiator column, which tells you exactly what 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 script and what line made this request. So if we click on this, uh, it'll actually take us to this line. Which, if you notice, this is minified JavaScript, so you're not going to be reading this very easily. And I've went and gone ahead and un uh, and beautified it, so now we can we can actually inspect the code. So if you recall the URL back here was uh it was it was this streams URL. So we're gonna look for any instance of streams. And sure enough, it takes us straight to the line that creates the request. And we have this underscore JM station ID and some parameters which uh are set right above it. And so we can see first time set it to one. Uh, we have this SID, which is apparently the session ID. Uh, we have the version number here. And SUW apparently stands for whether the sign up window is visible or not. And so we have everything. And then call uh, CB here is apparently the, the date and time. So we have everything we need. And I already went ahead and wrote a one line JavaScript, which will generate this for us. So this spits out the URL that was generating those new, the, the, the new song locations. So I'm going to copy that. And it turns out they actually patched their service like three days before I came to DEF CON and this is freaking me out. Uh, apparently they're doing some weird thing with checking your session but I found out to get around it is you can just refresh the, you can just refresh the, the radio station and then it will work. So here we have the next song that would be playing. And if we actually just keep refreshing this, it will give us a different song every time. So we can actually get every, sing every single song in their, in their music library. <laughs> but I, I did want to show you guys an exploit through my Chrome extension. So although I'm not going to be releasing it, I can show you guys what it looks like. So uh, let's pause it. So as you saw, there was a pop-up, and I clicked on it, and it takes us to my Chrome extension, and you can select it and then hit download. And it's right there. <laughs> so not not very difficult. So that was that was a Chrome extension, but I did say that I was going to be releasing this alternative tool. So what is this tool? Well, 
uh, I'm tentatively calling it Browser Shark until I get sued. But I already bought the domain name. I already bought the domain name, so I'm good. Uh, basically, what it's going to do is, if you recall earlier, I mentioned that I had a method where I would copy any URL that matched the syntax of the song, and, and then go retrieve it myself. Well, I decided that it wouldn't it be cool if I could record all my traffic going through and then cache that to the browser. Uh, and what happens is, is now I can. Uh, like I can just go to Google and all my traffic will show up right here. And what you can do with this is you can actually analyze the hex of the request to make sure that you're not getting any malware and it's nice enough to tell you what type of file it is. So if they're lying to you, you can tell. And like I said before, this would be really cool with forensics and stuff like that and I'm planning on doing more of uh, coding so you can do a little bit more with the hex editor. So this is a tool that I'm going to be releasing and I'll have the location to download it at the end of my PowerPoint. All right. So things I learned. Downloading music is inconvenient. Uh, I found that after I had music, I didn't know what to do with it because managing all this music was a pain. So actually now I honestly just use Spotify because uh, I don't like having to deal with files. Um, but services were fairly easy to exploit. I think with all the different services which I, I listed at the very beginning, I, I found exploits in them in three days total for all of them and the hardest one was uh, GrooveShark which took me a whole day. Um, Pandora actually was surprisingly easy. And it was impossible to, f it, it's actually impossible to completely protect streaming. streaming. Inherently, at some point you're going to have your music on my computer and I own my computer. And even if you use encryption you have to decrypt it so you can play it back and at that point you could copy the files. So inherently you can't protect streaming. Um, and some things you should know. People have bad security. Uh, this is a shocker. And some people will patch their code. Others will not. This is the beast of security. It's just the way it works. And the same web traffic logging will work with video streaming services too. Some of them, not all of them. People always ask me if Netflix will work. No, Netflix will not work. Uh, but if you go to some sketchy Chinese music streaming websites, I'm pretty sure this would work as well. Um, but that's, that's a topic for another day. So I did a case study. Uh, originally, the very first target I found was the Last FM, which, if you guys aren't familiar with, is a British music streaming service. And I found the vulnerability and I emailed them, I got no response. I made this Chrome extension, I got no response. But apparently they were able to fix it without my help. So good on them. Uh, and these are some things I noticed after they fixed it. They secured it heavily. Uh, they capped the bandwidth to match the playback speed. So you, it's actually impossible to, if you wanted to download the whole music library, it wouldn't be possible because you would have to wait as long as it would take to play back all that music, which is years. Um, so that's a good way to prevent people from stealing all your music. They also have one time use tokens. Like I said earlier, once your first request is made, your second request is no longer valid so you can't get the music. And they also had it, I also tried to do this like really weird, uh, like sketchy thing where like I would make sure that my requests would get there at like almost the exact same time. And what would happen was I would get a good 10 seconds on the fir on the, on my fake stream but then it would cut out because they only allow one stream open per time, uh, at a time. So that was pretty good. Um, and I couldn't exploit this and if you wanted to it would take a huge amount of time, it really wouldn't be worth it. I have hundreds of lines of obfuscated code and the bandwidth cap makes it so you can't really feasibly take all the music. So some mitigations. Um, using current technology, the one time use tokens is de definitely the best way to prevent people from, like I showed you before, right clicking and opening a new tab and then saving it because the, the second request won't work. Um, I've also seen people use RTMPE streams. Uh, so this is Adobe's, pr uh, Adobe's protocol which they use and the E stands for encrypted. I just want everyone to know that just because your protocol has an E in it doesn't mean it's encrypted. I've seen many services which have used regular RTMP non-encrypted traffic and just put the E as the protocol and that doesn't make it secure. Um, <laughs> and also returning the song in pieces really helps as well. Um, although, so SoundCloud actually did this a couple of days before DEF CON but they named all the pieces in numerical order so <laughs> that doesn't make it any more difficult for me to put them back together. 
Um, and for future proofing, you can you take a look at the HTML5 audio tag with DRM support and these guys from Virginia Tech wrote a paper on it. I haven't really looked much into it because uh, I, I know inherently that nothing's going to work. But if someone's interested, that's there. And so these are the references. I actually have uploaded the browser shark thing to the Google Play store, whatever. Um, so that's the long URL. I made a bit.ly if you don't, if you trust me enough to click on it. I assure you it's the same link. Uh, I'm also putting this project on GitHub, GitHub because I want it to be open source. It's empty right now, but I'm going to be putting stuff on there in the next couple of days because I don't trust DEF CON Wi Fi. Um, and then there's my blog. I sometimes put interesting stuff on there, sometimes don't, no guarantees. And that's the paper and the JavaScript beautifier. So there's my contact information if you want to talk to me. And uh, I'll take any questions now if anyone has any. Yes? How did you deal with renaming uh, all those files? Okay, so the question is how I dealt with renaming. Um, in the exploit extension, what I did was I wrote a script which would hook onto the page and I would use jQuery to take the file name and then the artist from the page itself because they provide that information so the user knows. So I, I actually spent a good like several hours trying to synchronize all the songs together but that's how I did it. Yes? Um, because I don't losing, I don't like losing all my money to lawsuits. Um, apparently the way it's written is I can get sued for twenty thousand dollars per count of trafficking and they have millions of songs which would turn out to billions of dollars which I don't have. <laughs> yes. I tried doing this with Spotify. Um, this guy in I think Norway or something did the same thing I was doing but happened to release the code for it several months before I gave this talk so they fixed it. So it does not work with Spotify. Yes. Uh, it honestly depends on the service. Um, I think Pandora did a better job of that. S some some of them allow users to upload their own own songs, and you will get like really weird cover like ads on as your cover album uh, art. So it just depends on the service. Yes. There is no DRM in any of these. These are just like straight, like you can play it back. Like as you saw, I was playing it back in uh, my music player when I downloaded it. So there is no DRM in, on any of these uh, songs. Any other questions? All right, cool.